just a quick introduction right about what is infrastructure all right. So, and the best way to do this is to ask you ok. So, what is uh, infrastructure ok structure system and I am also going to say enabler all right anyone else want to do we completely agree with the, what Arjun has said or do we like or do someone want to add anything on to this or disagree yeah. Makes oh, makes life simple. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now the thing is, is that uh, is that something generic that would apply to a variety of things, or is that something specific to infrastructure? Value for money, um, right? I mean, even if I bought an apple, I would want value for money. No, I don't want a rotten apple for fifty rupees, right? And I would love a juicy apple for one rupee, which I can never get, uh, right? So that's I think something that's more of a characteristics. I wouldn't. So I'm trying to define infrastructure. So maybe I should not sort of put that under the definition. Yeah. Chup, go ahead. Um, fine, yeah, structure will sort of say is oops, what happened there? Sorry, I need to get used to pressing the right buttons on the screen. Okay, so physical, yeah. All right, so essentially, so far we have it could be a physical structure, it could be not necessarily a physical structure, it could be a system. It enables, it facilitates, makes our life simple. All right, any other, uh, yeah. Um, okay, hopefully sustainable, fine. All right. Anyone else want to throw up anything? Um, does it necessarily though? In some ways, in some ways, uh, I mean, this is the uh, it kind of depends on how you define bringing people together. But one might argue that telecommunication infrastructure actually keeps people apart, right? So I don't need to come together. Okay, so I'm not quite sure that it brings people together. Some kinds of infrastructure connect, uh, right? So roads, for instance, obviously provide connectivity. Um, it's an interesting question, right? So I'm not quite sure. For instance, housing is also infrastructure, and that's more of a. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure. It, so it might not be a property of all of infrastructure, although it does work for several uh, aspects, several kinds of infrastructure, right? All right, so. Um, these are all interesting. Now I get the feeling, though, that all of you, or or many of you, right? Yeah. So uh, measurement criteria. So it is a criteria for measurement of development, right? So that's that's uh, fine. But is that what infrastructure is? Right? I'm talking about. I'm trying to get us to define what infrastructure is. Now I think many of you are defining infrastructure or thinking about infrastructure as an asset, right? It's a thing, right? It's sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's a building, it's an airport or whatever, right? It's an asset and that's one way of thinking about it. But yeah, you have a point, yeah. All levels, all levels, right? So the question is, how many of us really think of infrastructure as a service, right? So, and this is something that we really want to think about in terms of how we define infrastructure, right? So, when I define infrastructure, do I define it as an asset, right? It's something that I build, which, or do I define it as something that provides this kind of a service, right? And you'll find that in what you have said, there's a little bit of a mix of both, right? The makes life simple is certainly more of a service criteria, right? But the physical structure, for instance, is more of an asset kind of definition. So I think the important thing to understand is that infrastructure is both asset and service and this is critical all right because if we think of infrastructure as, as an asset we will be tasked with building good quality assets which means you build the fanciest thing that you can build perhaps the most expensive thing that you can build whatever but it may not necessarily provide service it may not necessarily make life simple it may not necessarily enable or facilitate it may not be sustainable and it might not hit all levels of society right and this is actually fundamentally very important because a lot of people when you say okay list some infrastructure we often think roads bridges power plants airports ports whatever right we think assets and assets of course are key but what i want us to do in this course is think of infrastructure as a service right infrastructure is all about providing you the service to do something that will enable you make your life easier make you more productive make you more wealthy make you more comfortable whatever it is right it's all about enabling so there's no so there are no points
for building the most expensive, most in complex from an engineering perspective asset if you are not delivering the service, right? So when we think about infrastructure, I think we need to think really more in terms of service, all right? So you guys didn't do the readings, but essentially some of the definitions that you will, you can later on look at, there's a, there's a brief intro chapter for this session. Uh, people talk about infrastructure as, as something that's public in the sense it's open to everybody, delivers essential services, helps achieve economic as well as social objectives, and it's essentially a foundation or a base on which society rests. If you don't have infrastructure, then you're in, you're in big trouble. You're essentially going back to a period in time where, uh, you know, humankind was essentially congregated around small settlements and almost completely self-sustaining because you didn't have the means to transport, you didn't have sort of sources of energy to do things that were technologically advanced, etc., right? Which is obviously a situation we can't even imagine ourselves in. Now, so it's essentially the base or the backbone on which society rests. And there are examples of infrastructure. There are tons, right? Um, in this class, right, because ultimately we are in an engineering institute and I am an engineer by training and all of that. When we talk about infrastructure, we will restrict ourselves by and large to what we call physical infrastructure, right? Which means roads, ports, airports, waterways, water and sanitation systems, power, telecom. We won't really get into things like education. Right, which people also classify as infrastructure. Right, it's also you know a backbone along which society should rest. Right, so there are what we, some people call this social infrastructure. Right, so we may not really get too deep into social infrastructure. Right, because in my view, it becomes very difficult to define performance parameters around social infrastructure. Very tough problem. Right, if you give me a bridge and you tell me how do I tell in 20 years if this or in 10 years if this bridge was successfully built or not, I can come up with a number of criteria, right? I can look at the physical characteristics of the bridge, has it, uh, you know, is there any sag, this, that, etc. I can look at the use of that bridge, how many people have used that bridge, etc. What was the cost of maintenance? And I can come up with a decision. But when I go to a school and I say, is this a good school or not? Right? Very difficult answer, right? What would you say? 100% of people passed 12th standard and so it's a good school? Maybe, but we know that passing 12th standard doesn't mean anything. Maybe these people just memorized everything in the book perfectly. Right, got great grades but didn't quite learn, right? And therefore, on the other hand, because some people failed, is it a bad thing? Or there's a school where the academic performance is mediocre, but they do very well in, you know, arts and sports and all of that. I mean, how do we even sort of start judging? So metrics around social infrastructure are much more difficult. And so that to me is a second order problem, right? Let's first get to the easy stuff, right? And then we'll get there. So this class will focus more on the easy part of the difficult stuff, which is the physical infrastructure. All right, uh, by and large, right? So not on the social infrastructure, right? Uh, I looked at the Merriam-Webster dictionary some years ago and it said underlying foundation or basic framework of a system or an organization is how they define infrastructure. So it is an underlying backbone, but it's not just a physical asset, right? It's tied towards the service that it delivers, right? And so when we think infrastructure, we need to think service. So we design infrastructure that provides better in, uh, service, not infrastructure that is low cost, right? That's the way you would think if you were designing an asset. If you're thinking an asset, you'd say, let me reduce the cost, right? Let me put in as many bells and whistles as possible so that, you know, it's something that's magnificent that people will comment upon, right? All of that relates to the asset. It may not relate to the service, right? In fact, low cost and service might be inversely correlated. It might make more sense to spend more money up front to provide lasting value, right? So maybe a more durable surfacing of the road is more expensive, but the road will be in better condition for 10, 15 years as opposed to reducing the cost of the road today, right? And, and giving a project plan to government saying, oh, I'm going to build you a very cost effective road and finding that you'll have to maintain it five years down the line, right? So think about it as service and not as asset, all right? So all kinds of infrastructure, this is the kind of stuff we'll be talking about in this class, transportation, water sanitation, energy, telecommunication, housing, right? Maybe even a little bit of, we're not really going to talk about it, but you know, parks and all of that are also part of, uh, you know, of physical infrastructure, all right? Okay, so I've got a couple of minutes. So I'll leave you guys with one thought, okay? And then we'll stop here, all right? So there's this guy called Quiroz, and I, I've sort of, uh, his article is part of that reader. And when you guys uh, pick it up, you can read it, right? Um, so uh, Quiroz uh, talks about this graph that people in the World Bank came up with a long time ago, right? And so the, the graph is quite simple. On the x-axis, right, you have a measure of infrastructure quality, right? How do you measure infrastructure? Uh, these guys said, let's measure it based on the uh, number of kilometers of paved roads that are there in a country. So if a country has a lot of paved roads, then the infrastructure is better. 
If a country has very few paved roads, kacha roads, etc., infrastructure is worse, right? So that's a measure of infrastructure growth. Now, some people will say, well, Switzerland is a tiny country. India is a much larger country. So obviously, in India, there'll be more paved roads than in Switzerland, right? So how does that work? So we divide it by the number of inhabitants or millions of inhabitants or whatever. So we get some normalized figure. Right, so India, India for its 1.2 billion people, there are so many kilometers of paved roads per million people. And in Singapore, in Switzerland, in uh, Turkey, in whatever, right. So the x-axis is a measure of the infrastructure of a country. The y-axis is the wealth of the country, right, which is measured in terms of GNP, gross national product, similar to GDP, gross domestic product, whatever, right. So this is wealth, this is infrastructure, right. And what does the graph tell us? Right, the graph tells us that there's actually a wonderful correlation. Right, so what we're seeing is countries here, right, have a relatively low wealth, GDP is low, also a relatively low quality of infrastructure. Countries here, relatively high wealth, relatively high quality of infrastructure. Right, countries here, mid, uh, medium wealth, medium quality of infrastructure. We really don't find countries here, high wealth, no infrastructure. Right, or countries here. Right, superb infrastructure, no wealth, right? And if you remember your statistics, there's something called an R squared that tells you the goodness of fit and all of that. And the R squared is pretty high, 0.76, right? I mean, one is perfect correlation, 0.76 is pretty high. And this is 98 countries, right? So I think there are roughly, I don't know, 170, 180 countries in the world, I think, at the moment, right? So this is a little, and this was done a little bit earlier. So this was probably about 60% of countries in the world. So the evidence is quite stark. Right? That, infra, so if, that if you want a country to go, and somebody mentioned this, right? so if you want a country to go, if you want a country to be strong, then one of the levers that you have to change is certainly infrastructure. Doesn't mean don't focus on education, don't focus on healthcare, but infrastructure is critical right, to a country's growth. Okay? So, and there's a lot of evidence. Other people have, have changed this. They've said, why only look at roads? Let's look at the amount of water supplied per capita. Right? That is a measure of infrastructure. Right? Or the amount of energy supplied you know, per capita or whatever. And you'll get very similar graphs irrespective of what you do, right? So I think the conclusion is relatively inescapable that infrastructure and the wealth of a country are very strongly linked. And therefore, if the, if the, if the at some point, if we sort of say, what can we do to make India a better country, etc., one of the things we certainly need to focus on, and something that the government has had in its sights for a while, is infrastructure, right? There's only one problem with this graph, though. What's the problem? One problem with the interpretation of this graph. So the causality is always a question. Now, do countries become rich because they have infrastructure or do rich countries invest in infrastructure? Right? Because I'm rich, I have more infrastructure because I have more money or because I have more infrastructure, I manage. So that becomes very difficult to unpack from this graph, right? Essentially, I have two variables. It's very difficult to tell which direction the causality goes in, right? So I don't want, and there's a bit of truth in both, right? Infrastructure does lead to greater wealth. So the more roads I have, the more produce can get shipped faster. So there's less sort of, uh, less cabbages and tomatoes get spoilt on the way because my roads are faster, more things get sold, and there's more wealth that's created. Right, more electricity, more of us can do productive, uh, you know, tasks after the sun is set, uh, right, and or we can study or whatever, and uh, therefore the wealth of the country can increase, right. Better quality water supply, uh, you know, we fall ill less often because there are fewer waterborne diseases. We are therefore more productive, wealth increases. So there is certainly an argument, qualitative argument to be made that if infrastructure is better, wealth can increase. But clearly, if you are a very wealthy country, you then tend to build, you know, better. Uh, special economic zones and facilities where you attract other companies to come in from all across the world and you know those kinds of things right so uh, there's a little bit but irrespective of the direction of causality right and there are pros and cons to both the point is infrastructure and economic growth are linked right and therefore you really need to focus on infrastructure if you're focusing on economic growth okay is essentially the uh, lesson here so and i think that's all i wanted to sort of talk about today sort of introduce what infrastructure is get this point home that we are thinking of infrastructure as a service not as an asset right and also show that infrastructure and economic growth are intertwined so if you want the country to develop among other things infrastructure is key right and what we're going to talk about is how many of you believe we have wonderful infrastructure in india okay couple people all right how many of you believe we have infrastructure that needs to be improved considerably? All right, everyone else. 
all right so i fall in the in the majority category as well i think we have some good infrastructure right but by and large i think our infrastructure across indices are uh, are ter are performing terribly so then the question is why what can we do about it and that's what we'll talk about in the class all right okay so i'll stop here